Hello everybody, it's me again and we're gonna cover new we're gonna start new series of videos and these videos are quite important for app developers. Alright, and the topic of this is going to be web services and JSON parsing. So let's go ahead and start. We're gonna discuss web services and how you implement them in iOS. We're gonna talk about JSON and the syntax of JSON. And finally, we will have we will spend a lot of our time developing the app that does that, that, that calls a web service and uh, extract or parse out JSON data. All right, so what is a web service? A web service is a method that allows different devices to communicate over the web, all right? So it's nothing but just calling something on the web and getting back a result. Okay, what makes it special, it actually takes, it to the, takes the web technology to the next level. It allows different devices with different, uh, different technology, different platform communicate with each other regarding, regardless of what platform you're using or technology. This is done by using exposing some functions on a web, on a hosted web server, similar to a web page. And these, uh, th these functions usually receive messages, parameters if you will, and give you back data. And the data that they give you back, in most cases, it's just text, which is XML and JSON. Sometimes you receive binary data, but not what not in this format. It would be like an image URL, okay? But in 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 our example, we're looking at using uh, getting JSON data. All right, we will talk about JSON when we get to it. Now, how do you do it in iOS? Well, you need few basic classes that are required to establish a web services, a web service call. Now I'm gonna cover the basics and to the minimum that get you started. So we will get, we'll have a class called an SURL session, an SURL session configuration, an SURL, an SURL request, and finally we have a function that actually does the invocation of this web service, all right? So let's take a look at these classes, what they mean. The NSURL session is basically a class along with other related classes provide a mechanism or a function or the, all the functions needed to download and upload content through HTTP, all right? The NSURL session configuration is the configuration that is required by an SURL session, and this configuration info include information such as defines that defines the behavior and the policies when uploading and downloading data. So this class is used, or this object is used by an SURL sessions that tells it how to download, what are the policies when downloading and uploading data. Finally, this is the request, and this is the actual request that get when you invoke it, you will get the data back. This data task with request requires a function, uh, an object of an SURL request. When it's completed, there is a completion block inside this that get invoked. Inside that block, if it was successful, you do something with the data, or if it's, there is an error, you just send out messages about the error. So let's take a look at the other classes that are needed, which is an SUR request. This is the actually object that represents the URL load request. This is what I'm invoking, all right? This is the package that I'm sending in that data task, all right? This requires a location. An SURL is the location of the service that we are trying to call on a particular web service, server. So we create the NSURL, an SURL and it is used in this class. Finally, that is the method that we invoked uh, previously. I know it's a bit confusing, but let me just summarize it quickly. What you have, you have an SURL session. It starts with an SURL session. The NSURL session needs a configuration to tell it how to communicate, when, how, what are the policies, so policy when downloading and uploading. Then you have an SURL request. The NSURL request requires a, an SURL object, which is the address of the web page or the service you're trying to invoke. 
Once you have that, then you invoke this method, data or task with request, passing to it the function that you created in SQL request. Once you do it once, it makes sense, and then it, you, you can follow the same example over and over again. So when you get the data, what kind of data we get? Remember, we were discussing JSON. So I get JSON data, which is, or XML, depending on what the server is sending you back. So if it is JSON data, it would stand for JavaScript object notation. Why is this important and it's becoming more popular? It's because it's a lightweight, lightweight light data exchange. And it's very, the format of it is, is very straightforward. It's, it follows JavaScript notations. You have either objects or array. An object is a collection of names slash value pairs, or an array is an ordered list of objects. So let's take a look at those. Here's an example of an object. An object starts with a bracket, curly bracket, ends with curly bracket, like a structure, and you have two values. This is your, like, this is your key and the value, the key and the value, the key and the value. It's like a hash table. So if you want to get the store ID, you will have to pass the store ID and it will give you back this, like an array, okay, and this is your key. So that is the object, straightforward. How about the array? The array, it starts with the curly bracket, uh, sorry, square bracket, and square bracket, and you will have a list of objects inside of it. So you have, here is an object, here is an object. Inside that object, you will have your pair, value pairs, all right? So store ID one, store, ID, store name, blah, 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 the rest, and the same thing in here. Now the array, you can give it a title or the, and that title is the object, or this would be the value of that object, okay, of that array. So if I wanna get all the elements, the array for this object, I have to use this key and say, give me the object with the name store. So this will return the array with all the elements inside of it. Sometimes you have array within an object. So for example, here we have store description, we have an icon, for example, you can have images, a list of images for that store. So you will have an array in here inside of it with image one, image two, image three, and so forth. To get to that array, you will have to use the key for that array. It could be, for example, uh, store images, okay? And then you will have an array of values here. All right, so that is a brief introduction on uh, web services and JSON data. In the app, we will actually implement it in two parts. The first part, we will just create the web service without looking, at the, without looking at the JSON data. And then once we get it to work properly, in the next one, we will do actually uh, parse out the JSON data. All right, and I will see you in the next videos.